Hi, I'm Aaron Skinner and welcome to this series about airbrushing. For those of you from MRVP, I'm a senior editor with Fine Scale Modeler magazine where I've written many articles about airbrushing and this book, which you can get from Combat Books. In this series, we're going to talk about all aspects of airbrushing from beginner level things like what are airbrushes, how to pick one, and all the way up to advanced projects like how to spray that boxcar or airplane. So let's talk about airbrushes themselves and what are they. They've been around for more than 100 years and the basic idea is to deliver paint to the surface by atomizing it. It's mixing air and paint at the nozzle. They all work basically the same no matter how they do that mixing. So let's talk about the differences between those. The most basic difference and the thing that kind of differentiates uh, all airbrushes is double versus single action. On single action airbrushes, like this Pache H or Badger 200, the trigger does just one thing, and that is start the flow of air. Paint flow is adjusted either by a turn screw at the back end of the brush, as on the Badger, or at the front of the brush on this Pache H. On a double action airbrush, like this Grex or Meng, the trigger not only begins the airflow by pushing down, but by pulling it back, you can adjust the paint flow immediately. So the obvious question is, what's the difference? What are the advantages? On a single action airbrush, the real advantage is you know exactly what the paint pattern is going to be coming out of the brush, because you're going to preset it. The double action gives you that immediate control. You can go from very fine to fat lines simply in one paint stroke. Single action airbrushes can be further subdivided by where the paint mixes with the air. On an external mix brush like this Pache H, the paint and air mix at the nose or nozzle of the brush, therefore external. On an internal mix brush like this Badger, the paint and air mix within the body of the brush behind the nozzle, therefore it's called an internal mix. The advantages of that are I think you get a little bit finer control, a little bit more of a neat pattern than you do on an external mix brush, but the external mix brushes are often easier to clean because there's no paint within the body of the brush, so there's less breakdown. So where the paint comes from, or the paint reservoir, also differentiates airbrushes. There are gravity feed, side feed, and siphon feed. So on a gravity feed brush like this Iwata, the paint cup is mounted directly on top of the brush and opens into the paint channel at the bottom. You can see the needle in this one, in fact. The opposite is a siphon feed where the paint is actually stored in a bottle beneath the brush. It is drawn up by the pressure from the air traveling over the nozzle into the paint flow. The best of both worlds might be what's called a side feed where the paint channel opening is mounted on the side of the brush. In this case, on this Iwata Neo, you can use either a gravity feed cup that's mounted above or a bottle below. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of the paint placement? On a gravity feed brush, gravity is doing the work of putting the paint into the brush. So I find you can spray with a lot less pressure than you need with the other types. The disadvantage is that the paint cup is directly in your line of sight when you're looking over the brush, which means that it may be a little harder to see when you're working close exactly where you're aiming. On a siphon feed, you don't have that problem, but you usually need a little bit more pressure because you're relying on that air pressure to pull paint into the paint channel. The side feed kind of gives you the best of both worlds. The biggest disadvantage I find with those is they're a little harder to clean because you don't have a direct line into the paint channel. Traditional airbrushes, the kind that have been around for 100 years or so, have always had the button mounted on top and you would hold it kind of like a pencil or a paintbrush. Very intuitive. Newer brushes, those from Grex and Iwata, have started using a pistol grip with a trigger mounted in front of an ergonomic handle. Now I don't mind the pistol grip, but I really prefer the traditional double action because I think I have more fine control over air pressure at the trigger. The most critical part of any airbrush, no matter what kind it is, is the needle and nozzle. These are the real operating points of the brush and they have to match exactly. Many manufacturers will give you options to replace them with different sizes and it's important to change both the needle and the nozzle when you do that because they have to match exactly for paint flow to be perfect. Any trip to a hobby store or art supply place will show you that there are dozens of brushes out there and we've already talked about many of the different kinds. So the question is, what kind should you get? 
You might assume that the versatility of a double action is the way to go, and there is something to be said for jumping in with both hands and learning how to use one. But never overlook the idea of a single action airbrush. I know several guys who do fantastic work with old Pash AHs. I routinely use my Badger 200 single action for general coverage. Otherwise, I have several double actions, a Grex, an Iwata, and a Meng, which I use for a lot of my work. My advice, talk to as many modelers as you can about the kind of brushes they use for the kind of finishes that they're getting. That advice, plus going to a store and trying out a few brushes, at least handling them, seeing how they feel in your hand, getting a feel for how the trigger pulls, will give you a better idea of what's going to work for you. Take your time when making this decision and be willing to spend a little extra money to get the best brush that you can buy. This is one of the few investments that is going to change your modeling for the better. Now, we've covered a lot of ground today, but we haven't actually gotten any painting done. We're going to head into the booth in the next episode to talk about spray patterns, paint thinning, and a whole lot more. <laughs>